Hey, you 11s slash 12s. How's it going, guys? Uh, so I've obviously just been looking at the chat. Julian trying to escape jokes, lol. Uh, yeah, so obviously this is meant to be our last lesson. And to escape jokes, lol. We, we, we're really close to finishing calculations, really close. And A, it'll be a really handy resource for me to have done the whole of AS calculations on these webinars. So it has value for me to finish it. Also, it has value for you. I am aware that you guys technically won't have to come. And so I will not have to run a register, which is handy. I'd like to think that you guys have enjoyed this enough to want to at least finish it. But as I said, it will be voluntary. I will be doing them in the lessons as scheduled as normal. I'll just continue doing them. Um, and there will be a test at the end of it. Uh, the test is not mandatory. The test will be voluntary again. But uh, again, I'd really like to think that you guys have have, you've put in all the work. You guys have put in all the effort to get this far in calculations. I kind of feel like lots of you will want to do the test. Uh, but like I said, it's not going to be mandatory. You won't have to do it if you don't want to. We're still missing Adam. I know that Adam's often having problems with his internet. Also missing Alistair and Aisha. Those are the only three people that are now missing. I'll mark them as missing for now and then update them when they arrive. So, uh, okay, let's crack on. I'll leave that as like that. I'll go back to the, the channel. Okay, right, folks. So today's, today's lesson is on parts per million. So ugh. let's share screen. I'd love to have a little bit of a feedback on the chat. In fact, can I have a quick show of hands? Give me a ha give me a quick wave on the chat with an emoji if you feel like you're going to continue watching these. If you there's we we haven't got that many left. So just to show you in terms of AS calculations and the key thing was lesson number 2. We're on lesson number 13 now. And these are all calculations that we've had, and you can see how far we've got through. We haven't done percentage composition. I've skipped it. Um, but uh, I think I incorporated it into a little bit um, with another lessons, and I'll do some more of that. But you can see what we've got left. We've only actually got five lessons left. And, and, and three of them are, um, I like that. Anch, thanks for that. I might. When will these lessons be? They're going to be at the same time as the lessons have been since we started this, <laughs> uh, Oliver. Um, I've got quite a lot of pack to do, quite a lot of packing to do, but I'll try my best. Okay, just being honest. Fair enough, I understand that. Well, as I said, it has value for me, so I am I will continue doing them anyway. I'm actually doing, you'll notice that I have done it uh, at the end of this lesson, the only one left at A-level to do is technically the relative atomic masses. These ones are actually GCSE. So technically, there's only two more lessons of A-level. Um, so I feel like at least I've covered the majority of the content, but I do feel like I want to re go over excess. Excess reagents is the hardest calculations at GCSE, and they're rare at GCSE and common at A-level, and water crystallizations are hard as well. So I do see the value in going over them, but I figured I'd do the A-level ones first. So today's title is Parts Per Million. So our learning objectives, I need you guys, I'll do it in black. It won't be a very long lesson today. I need you guys to understand PPM. I need you to understand A, what it really is saying, what it's used for, yeah, and to be able to understand it to the stage where you're able to access questions which are beyond the Edexcel specification. Uh, it's very easy to surpass it. Yeah, the questions tend to be relatively straightforward at TEDxL, but they have been known to have some really challenging ones. And I just need you guys to be able to calculate PPM. That's it. Two learning objectives today. Calculate PPM in questions. Okay, so the first thing to do is we need to just have a quick chat about what parts per million is. So parts per million. 
I wonder if anybody's as can I have another show of hands or a quick shout out in the chat? How many people have heard of this already? I'm also going to mention parts per billion as well uh, in the lesson as an extension. Note of I'll put the note of Bene over here. Note of Bene. There is also PPB. P P B. And this stands for parts per billion. Parts per billion. And hopefully you're going to realize that in reality, this is not a complicated issue. It's just heard of it. Cool. Glad you have. It's nice that you have. Yeah. So that's extension I will add to this. So parts per million. Parts per million is simply a type of concentration. Parts per million. A type of concentration. Now, I don't want to actually write down concentration unit. I don't really want to do that. I just want to let you know that it is a type of concentration. And it's used primarily, used in industry, in industry for dot, dot, dot. Yeah, so number one, it is used for gases. Number one, it is used for gases. Now, most of the time, toxics, the toxic gases. Uh, it's things like parts per parts per million of sulfur dioxide, parts per, parts per million of hydrochloric acid. It's these toxic gases that tend to be found, and it's it's only used when the concentrations are so low, quoting moles per dm cubed would no longer be functional. The number would be so small that it wouldn't really become, it, it becomes kind of incomprehensible. So they invented a new one to be able to access extreme, you can add this as a nota bene. The purpose, uh, purpose of parts per billion, purpose of PPM, parts per million, is for concentrations, concentrations so low, so low that moles per dm cubed would be silly, would be silly. Because all that's going to happen is you're going to end up, I'll put that in a bubble as well, you're going to end up in the example of this because everyone knows that you've, you guys have been using moles per dm cubed now as your concentration unit, and you tend to see anywhere from 10 moles per dm cubed, 10 moles per dm cubed to kind of 0.01 moles per dm cubed. These are, that there is a very common range. Yeah, that's a common range quoted for, for standard units of concentration, yeah? conch range and if you go way below that if you drop into 0 0.0000006 i've just chosen a random number moles per dm cube that just becomes nonsensical it it doesn't really allow you to be able to actually have a grasp of what that number really is and having to write down all those zeros just becomes problematic so what we do is we now created a a method of writing concentration of a reasonable number. And I'm going to show you how to convert all of these things during the lesson. Number two, the second reason why e industry tends to use it is they tend to use it for toxins, toxins in solution. Um, and the examples are things like, e.g., yeah, mercury. We know that mercury is a toxic metal. Mercury in water reservoirs or, or in water brackets, lakes or rivers, lakes slash rivers. Yeah, they also, uh, I'm going to give you another EG, EG number two is things like iron metal, iron ions, iron two plus, iron three plus. Any, these are what are class. I'm actually going to give you other ones as well, which are common. Chromium three plus, uh, other ones include cobalt, cobalt two plus. These are classed as heavy metal ions. 
Now, heavy metal ions, heavy metal ions, and heavy metal ions are extremely toxic, extremely. They interfere with all kinds of metabolic processes. Uh, everyone, of course, has heard of these horrible scenarios in the United States when you know the, the, the kids get hold of a, a multivitamin tablet and the kid ends up eating all of them because they think they're sweets. And what they actually die from is heavy metal poisoning. And most of the time it's iron. Most, uh, most other transition metals are deemed heavy metal toxins. And they build up and they they actually, they mimic the roles. Uh, for those people who ever think of going into biochemistry, just a little bit of information on this. Uh, heavy metal ions, heavy metal ions, can um, they? What's the right words for this? They act as a um, as as uh, analogs. Um, can my heavy metal ions can act as uh, substitutes? Substitutes? Substitutes for common ions such as calcium and magnesium. These two ions here, which everyone knows you need in your diet, yeah, and these are these ions here are absorbed through your various protein cha pro uh, protein channels in your cells, and um, the heavy metals will be absorbed instead of them. And of course, they're, they're highly toxic. So once they enter the cell, yeah, once they enter the cell, they'll kill it. Yeah, heavy metal ions can act as substitutes for calcium and magnesium. So enter cells, enter cells through same channels, through same protein channels, protein channels, uh, killing cell. So they're highly toxic, killing cell. Um, I've poisoned myself several times with heavy metals throughout my career. As a as a as a chemistry teacher, I, I often find myself uh, doing practicals or demonstrations, demonstrations rather than practicals, with various heavy metals. And I have experienced moments of heavy metal poisoning. Um, why, sir? Um, uh, I was doing a demonstration with uh, iron three. Uh, chloride, where I ended up poisoning myself with that one. Um, I, I did it in a fume cupboard. I did it with all the safety precautions in place. But um, because I had been practicing it over a couple of days, I clearly built up a, a level which was that gave me a, um, minor symptoms. Your, your body's very good at removing it. I've marked you in on the register, Aisha. It's lovely to see you. I mean, it was it was only a it was only a day or so where I felt the effects of it. Uh, you, you really don't want to try it. Feels like your skin's crawling off your body, Adam. It's horrible. The very first uh, symptoms of heavy metal toxicity. It's nice to actually mention this as well. So symptoms symptoms of heavy metal poisoning are uh, shaking, uh, shaking hands, very common. Shaking, shaking hands. Jittery filled jitter, yeah, which is a consequence really of the shaking, really. Uh, and also, your skin, uh, skin feels like it's crawling. It's it's not a nice experience. Skin feel like it is crawling. It's not a nice thing. Uh, it it lasts uh, a day or so. You can actually get treatment for heavy metal poisoning with a, a compound called EDTA. The treatment for it, nice of me to add this on as well, uh, treatment for heavy metal poisoning is EDTA. You learn about that in year 13 chemistry in transition metal chemistry, EDTA 4 minus. Uh, Sir, so skin doesn't crawl. No, but it feels like you've got bugs on you. That's what it feels. It feels like it's crawling. It feels like it's crawling in with bugs. It's not a nice experience. Um, Uh, so it's something to be aware of. Um, there, there's very few times. Uh, actually, M Malaysia is actually a very interesting one. Uh, and it's fascinating for me to have done the research when I came to Malaysia. So 
Uh, it's just nice for me to put Nota Bene's over here on Malaysia. Yeah, so Nota Bene. So in Malaysia, Malaysia, you, you, you are told uh, not to drink the water. Yeah, don't drink water. Now, don't drink water. Now, you're, you're told this, you're told this, but you're not actually given the reason why. Most people think because the water is going to poison you, like you're going to get like bacteria. That actually is not the case. Malaysia, Malaysia has high levels, has high levels, uh, high levels of uh, arsenic, arsenic, uh, what's the other one, which is very common? I need, a, I need a periodic table to remind me of the metal that is. Arsenic, uh, uh, it's good, it always jumps, there you go. Arsenic and antinomy. These are the two heavy metals, and then funnily enough, they're in the same group. What's interesting, of course, is neither of them are in the transition metal block, but these are both heavy metal toxins. Also, probably reasonable levels of lead. Remember, fluoride, ah, you've got to be careful. Not fluorine, Adam, but fluoride. That's different. That's actually added to the water supply in order to strengthen teeth and bones. I don't actually think Malaysia add it, funnily enough. They add chlorine. The chlorine is in the water system, so it's you're not going to get sick from, uh, from actually drinking the water. Um, I'll add the antinomy on there as well. Arsenic and antinomy. Uh, is it antin or tim timony? Timony? Tinomy? Tinomy? Uh, M. There you go. Timony. And so, can I just say, by the way, it's not actually particularly dangerous. As long as you don't drink it for, your, for a lifetime, then this, they, they actually, it, they're fascinating heavy metals because one of the problems with heavy metals is that they, they actually uh, accumulate in fat reserves. So you, you, there are very, there are most people who experience heavy metal poisoning in Malaysia, and most of the time have gone on extreme diets. And when you when you go on a diet, and your body then starts chewing through your fat reserves, all those heavy metals then pour into your blood system, and then you suffer from heavy metal toxicity. It's really interesting. It is fascinating. Okay, so. Now that we've had a quick chat about why we're doing it and the fact that we're measuring these things and they're so low we can't really use our standard units, we need to talk about what parts per, per million is. Now, PPM is a very straightforward equation. So you have X. Now, X is the substance you're trying to measure. Yeah, uh, measured substance. Uh, measured, measured substance. Now, I'm putting substance there. I should put species, but in, real, in reality, I think substance is probably a better shout. Then you have what it's in. Y is the, the volume of whatever you have. Yeah, this is the volume of uh, water, volume of dot, dot, dot. Now, this might be a volume of one. It might be water that it's in, so hence the lake. You'd take a sample, you'd take... 10 milliliters and you'd use that as your volume yeah uh, but this is volume of sample that's better volume of sample that might be water or that might be a sample of gas yeah uh, very common as i said these are the two places that you tend to see ppm appear in you tend to see it in terms of solutions due to toxins seeping into the ocean into lakes and other water systems or you tend to do it in gases things like air um so you, you guys uh, realized that we had the haze, yeah? And they were, I, were they measuring haze in PPM? I can't remember, but you could actually get it. Um, it was on the app. Uh, and the next thing is all you then do is times it by a million. Now there's only one clause in this. At this point, I ought to mention parts per billion, which is if you're using parts per billion, then you're just going to substitute the million for a billion. And a billion, just so you know, I'll just put a little nota bene underneath this. Nota bene, PPB, which has appeared on Edexcel twice in the last three years that I've been here. Yeah, uh, most of the questions have been parts per million, but parts per billion has arrived. Uh, parts per billion, you just have times by a billion. And a billion is a thousand million, so it's just got the extra three zeros. Yeah, so it's just a nice, easy adaptation to make. But I actually, the, the first time this appeared, since I was here, I hadn't taught it. Most of the kids had figured it out, um, but they, they, a couple of kids still came out saying, what was I multiplying it by? So, and by the way, that will result that the end of that calculation is equals PPB. Sorry, PPM. Ugh. Oh, 
I don't want to, I don't want to erase that. I'm just going to move it, move it out the way since I kind of want to have that. I'll just move that one down there. Yeah. So the end of this calculation is equals PPM. Now that's actually quite important equals PPM parts per million. Now there's a clause in this entire scenario and here's the clause. Uh, and I guess I can, I can, I'm going to flag this with a star. Yeah. The clause is in order for you to use this calculation, both X and Y must be in the same units. And that is so important. That's the main trap here, folks. Yeah. X and Y must, and this is where I capitalize, must be in same units. I'll show you this in a minute when you see the questions. Now, can I just point out, by the way, that what that means is these questions have a, have multiple steps to them because quite often you have to make the units match before you can access the equation. So let's do an example of this. Let's do an example. Uh, now, at this point, I don't really want to start just making things up, but I actually can. Uh, I'll show you why. So let's say, let's go for question number one and just apply our equation to these things and let's make it easy at the beginning. Yeah. So if we did, if we did, um, um, got to be careful. I'm going to start off easy and get harder. Yeah. Let's say I have sodium chloride aqueous. This means seawater, salt water, sodium chloride at 25 grams per dm cubed. Yeah. So, and it then just simply says, Calculate PPE, yeah, PP, PPM. Calculate PPM parts per million. Now, what we immediately do is we go X over Y times a million, yeah, times a million gets me PPM. So all we have to do now is figure out, so X is the substance we're trying to measure, and that's the sodium chloride. And we've been given that as 25 grams. So that number there is going to drop immediately in on top. Now, the question is now is what is the volume I'm in? Now, I'm in liters here. Yep. So this here is going to be. So this now will and that liter there must now drop in to down here because that is per. That's too fat. I don't like it. That is per liter. Yeah. So the liter drops in here. Now, at this point, students then make the error. Because what they then do is, of course, they forget the units problem. Because what they now do is we can then go, uh, therefore, yeah, I can go 25 over. Now, I need Y to also be in grams. I can't leave it as a liter. The units aren't the same. So what now I must do is convert. This is per liter. Now, if you have dm, so this is where we start picking up notabenes, yeah, and these are notabenes are also important, yeah, notabene. So, number one, number one, one centimeter cubed is equal to one milliliter, which is also equal to one gram. So, one decimeter cubed is equal to a thousand centimeters cubed slash thousand milliliters. That's the biology squishy unit. We don't use that one in chemistry. It's stupid, but every now and again, Edexcel do have it in their exams, which is why I have to include it, which will therefore equal 1000 grams. And there's my unit. So I now have to translate the per liter into per 1000 grams. Now I times it by a million and I end up with my final parts per million. I shouldn't do it. I shouldn't have that. That needs to be in a bubble. Yeah, because it is important. We'll do more of these in a minute. So my final answer out of this need my calculator. So I've got 25 divided by a thousand times a million. And you've got to count your zeros very carefully on your calculator. That there is 25,000 ppm parts per million. 
which is a stupid number, so we wouldn't really be measuring that particular example in parts per million. We wouldn't bother. We would just be in grams per liter. It's when it gets really small. Let's go for the next one, question number two. So question number two, and we have this from our ethanol question, the drink driving limit, the drink driving limit, limit is 70 mic, uh, milligrams, 70 milligrams per liter, yeah, per liter of blood. So then it says, therefore, calculate ppm. Yeah, what would be your ethanol level? Yeah, what would be your ethanol level in parts per million if you were at the drink driving limit? So, x over volume, yeah, over y times a million. Yeah, so we can now input the data. 70 has been given to us. Yeah, but now, so we can therefore go, ah, oh, so therefore, 70 milligrams over... Now, we now know that one liter equals 1,000 grams. We're about to get the question wrong, aren't we? The units aren't the same, yeah? What we realize is we need to get to milligrams or grams. Either way, whichever one you want to convert. So one, this is where another note of NA appears. One milligram. One milligram equals 0 0.001 grams. It's a thousandth. If you had one microgram, that would be a millionth of a, of a gram. Yeah, there you go. One micro, this is milligram. I'm actually going to write that down and I'll, I'll put it on top. Milligram. Yeah, that milligram is a thousandth of a gram. And then we have microgram. Yeah, micro is 10 to the minus six, so it's a millionth of a gram. Yeah, so one gram is one million micrograms. Yeah, that is important. You need all these conversions. Yeah, so at this point, I go, right, I'm going to convert someone. I'm going to convert the top value. Yeah, I'm going to divide the top value by a thousand to put it into grams. So that now will therefore, I'm keeping each step. I don't want to delete each step. So I'm going to have, and I'm, by the way, I'm, I'm kidding you not, I'm doing that on a calculator because I don't want to make the error of the, of the decimal place being in the wrong point. 0 0.07 grams per 1,000 grams of blood times a million. This is not complicated. It just requires you to do the converting. And you have to just be aware of it all the time, divided by 1,000 times by a million. Count my zeros very carefully. And the answer is amazingly 70 parts per million. It's actually the same as the milligrams per liter. I never teach that, by the way. That's a very common thing that you come across. A milligram per liter is the same as parts per million, but I don't like teaching it. It's something that I don't want you to make a note of. It's not good to learn those kind of translations because the questions are too variable and you'll lose it. Right, let's try another one. Right, question number three. Let's drop into a gas question. Okay, so sulfur dioxide, SO2, causes, SO2 causes blank. On the chat, please, what does SO2 cause? SO2 causes blank at, um, at 10 parts per million. What is the concentration... What is the concentration in, let's do, um, hmm, let's do, uh, I've gone and stumped myself here now, folks, what I want to convert it to, um, Let's do grams per cent. Let's do, um, what do I want to convert it to? It would probably be grams per centimeter cubed, I guess. 
grams per centimeter cubed. Why not? Let's give that a try. Let's see what that does. Acid rain. Thank you, Manisha. Only one on, on the only, I think everyone else has just given up watching. <laughs> Acid rain. Thank you, Manisha. So in order for us to convert this out, we go X over Y times a million times a million will give me 10 parts per million. Now, I need to spit out the units of grams per centimeter cubed, which is an interesting one, isn't it? Because what we now need to do is we now need to make sure that X and Y both fit that. So the total volume is per one centimeter cubed. Would we agree? So that's going to be, is this even gonna work out? This is the problem with me making them up. It's not never a good idea for me here. That is per one centimeter cubed. So, oh, but then I'd have to get to grams. Mm, okay, moles per, per centimeter cubed. The units just have to be the same. X over one centimeter cubed. I can just reorganize it. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, it's, it's gonna just give me centimeters cubed per centimeters cubed. Ooh, that's weird, isn't it? Don't like that. Yeah, the latter's the big number and the milligrams just needs to make sure that, that goes in. Because uh, I'm converting the, the, the decimeters into grams there to make it the same. I'm going to spit out in centimeters cubed, that's all. So if I just rearrange it, it just becomes x times a million equals 10. Divide both sides by a million. Yeah, it's going to give me it. Oh, and it's going to be centimeters per centimeter cubed. Ha! That's hilarious. This will be centimeters cubed per centimeters cubed. Isn't that fascinating? That's what it's going to spit it out as in the concentration wise. How fascinating. So that's gonna be 10 divided by a million. One times 10 to the minus five. Uh, so that would be, so you can see why they give it in parts. Oh, shift eng, shift eng. There we go. 0 0.0, 0 0.040 zeros, one centimeters cubed per centimeters cubed of air. That centimeters cubed of SO2 per centimeters cubed of air. That's actually what it's actually saying there, which is fascinating. Um, it'd be interesting for me to find a gas equation, gas question for you to see how they do it. But you can see why the num that's stupid and why they'd use parts per million instead. That's per gas molecule. So really interesting. So you kind of get the point. I'm now going to, let's, let's look at some real, some real exam questions. Cause I've just been putting together some of the ones from the previous exams. Okay. So on the chat folks, on the chat. There you go. Question number one. This is straight out of an Ed Excel exam. I believe this was 2016. So guys, which, what is the value, please? Off you go. Run the calculation and have a go. You can pause the video and then contribute on the chat. Now, this one, of course, is an easy one. I'll take a full screen snip. Be nice to see people contributing on the chat if they can, folks. There we go. Right. So we know we've got X over Y, and Y is the volume. Yeah, the volume that we're in. It says 2,000 grams of solution contains 0 0.015 grams. So there's my solute. Yeah, if you like, you can do solute here. Solute and solvent. That even works for solute being as a gas, you see. It does actually work out. Can be done. Uh, my, my laptop's having a bit of a hissy fit here, folks. It's not enjoying, it's not liking me. It's, like it's literally ignoring me what I'm doing. Oh, come on, there we go. So solvent, if you like, you can do solute over solvent, if you like, yeah, times a million. I feel like everyone's disappeared from me. So I've got, no, and they're in this, look at that, the units are the same as well. That's nice and easy, yeah. So 0 0.015 divided by 2,000 grams of solvent times it by a million, count my zeros, and I get an answer of B in parts per million. Not complicated, not difficult. Let's go for the next one. Let's go for the next one. Right, okay. 
7.5, spot on. Thank you very much, Meryl. Woo woo, absolutely. Well done, good job, Meryl. Thank you for contributing on the chat. Sorry, I'm very slow. Keyboard smash, whatever it is. Keyboard slam, smash, slam, bash. I don't know, bosh. I don't know. So, solute. Let's switch it up and do solute over. I don't like these words because if you get a gas, well, here, the oxygen one's about to appear, by the way. There you go. Um, times a million. I, I have no idea why it just changed color on me. Haven't got a clue. I didn't click it. So, equals. PPM. Now, this one, they've given us the PPM. So that's going to drop in down here at 33. The million, of course, still stands. The million, of course, still stands. Uh, and it says the mass of solute. So we want the solute, and it's over one kilogram. Right, so if I keep kilograms, I'll spit it out per kilogram. Yeah, kilograms per kilogram. But what I'll do is I'll convert. Oh, they want it in grams. There's a trap in there. Look at that. That's clever. So I need to remember to convert. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to divide both sides by a million. If I divide both sides by a million, then the million vanishes. And then I'm going to times both sides by a thousand. Uh, oh, hang on. Sorry, it doesn't disappear from that side, does it? Just disappears from the other side. There we go. That cancels over there. So this is going to be 33 times a thousand divided by a million. Count your zeros on your calculator. On the chat, please. C. Yeah. Okay, guys, have a go at this one for me. Pause the video. Have a go on the chat. Cold water fish required a minimum of eight parts per million by mass of oxygen dissolved in water. The minimum mass of oxygen required in one kilogram. So there's my solvent. Yeah. So solute over solvent times a mil, 10 to the six. Uh, and they need eight parts per million. So that a kilogram needs to spitting out in grams. So we need to make sure we're using grams. Yeah. So that's a thousand grams of the solvent. Reorganize times a thousand divided by 10 to the six, and I'm done. Eight times by a thousand divided by 10 to the six gives me eight times 10 to the minus three. B, there you go. So the process itself is not overly complicated. That one's relatively easy. Milliliters making an appearance. Moles, ooh. Isn't that interesting? B, well done, Meryl, well done, Anch. Spot on. B was correct, I believe. Yes, well done. So I'm looking for tricky ones now. Let's go for this. What is the concentration in parts per million when five moles of methane are dissolved in 1,500 1, milliliters of water? That's interesting. Parts per million. We've got moles and milliliters. Isn't that interesting? So what we now really realize what we need to do here is we need to get to grams. We need the same units. Now, people are going to say, could you dissolve it in, in moles of water divided by 18 since you know the MR of water? It'll be interesting to run the maths and see if it gives us the same answer. Let's have a go at it. That's going to be fascinating. We can run both and see if we get the same thing. Full screen snip. I'm liking this question. It's a good question. Come on, little laptop. I don't know why you're taking so long. Blimey. Really is slow today. I don't know why. No idea. It's probably because I've got a load of tabs open. Right. Let's run it. So let's run this as moles first. So, okay. So we want X, our substance of desired, our desired substance, divided by the total volume, which is that guy, but the problem is this one's in moles and this one's in milliliters. Well, we can translate that immediately to 1,500 grams. And then we can divide that by 18.0, the ml of water. Notice my 0, .0 folks. 15,000 divided by 18, it's going to give me 83.33 moles. Yeah, times a million. I'm curious to see if this is going to come out. Very interested. Yeah, and we know that this is 0.5 moles there. Yeah, 
So 0 0.5 divided by 83.33 times by a million gives me 6,000. That's really interesting because it's actually none of the above. That's actually just given me exactly 6,000 on the dot, which is super interesting. I wonder whether or not it's a rounding error. Let's do 1,500 grams divided by 18. And then I now do 0 0.5 over answer. No, it's even more accurate. That's hilarious. Gives me 6,000 dead on, which suggests him. Well, let's now run this as masks. Yeah. So let's do, we want X over Y. We can insert the 1,500 grams there. Yeah, and now I need to put the moles of methane into grams. Number of moles is grams over rams. So the moles, which we already have, moles times by rams, yeah, will give me grams. So 0 0.5 multiplied by what methane weighs. Methane is carbon is 12.0 plus hydrogen 1.0 times 4, which equals 16.0. So times that by 16.0, this is where my laptop going slow is doing my head in. I don't know why it is going so slow. Uh, no idea. Let's close some of these down. Ah, oh, maybe it's running it. I think it might be running it. Let's get rid of all of these. There we go. See if that's any better. So not any better, is it? Come on. Sorry, guys. The laptop doesn't work as fast as I do. And this is my i7 as well. It's really struggling today. It's not usually like this. Don't know why. It's not even bringing it up at all now. Like it's completely given up. Oh, it's not making that disappear either. Oh, no. Let's close him. Let's close him. Let's close him. Okay. I wonder if you've done it. So times by 16.0. Let's just quickly erase that four. If it's going to let me, it's really having a, it's not enjoying this at all. But anyway, let's do it anyway. 0 0.5 multiplied by 16.0 gives me eight. Eight grams I had. So eight then slots into here. Eight divided by 1500 times by a million. And I get five, three, 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 three. So it's that one. Isn't that fascinating? Doesn't give you the same answer. It's very interesting that. I don't know why my laptop's being so rubbish, but it is. Let's get rid of that as well. I'm trying to just free up some memory. Anyway, I should turn off my camera. Uh, stop mic slash cam. Uh, I just stop cam. Okay, let's see if that helps. No, because it's still using it. That's stupid, stupid, stupid. And it's now definitely not bringing it back. What a nightmare. Let's go back to this one. Okay, so this, I have no idea what my laptop's doing, folks. It's gone mad. I'm actually going to leave you there, folks. Let's see if I can bring you guys back at all. Start cam. Let's see if I can bring you guys back. My laptop's having issues. Yeah. Right, that brings us to the end of parts per million. I will set you the homework. There's about 25 parts per million questions, all from Edexcel papers. I will see you guys next lesson. Have a nice rest of your day. See you later, guys. Um, if I don't see you again, it has been an absolute honor and a, honor and a pleasure to teach you all AS calculations. It has been really, really great. I've really enjoyed it. Um, I wish you guys all the best of luck. If I don't see you, be safe. Enjoy wherever you go next. And I wish you guys all the best of luck. Um, and hopefully I'll see you next lesson then. Otherwise, take care, guys. See ya.